Okay, before we connect the electronics to the computer or the controller to the computer, um, I want to turn it on connected to a whiteboard drawing mechanism that I, I built for demonstrating certain aspects of CNC and, and motion control. Because we have the electronics plugged into a real mechanism that can run pretty fast and potentially damage parts, you want to make sure to press the stop when you plug in the controller so the machine won't move before you know exactly how it's going to work. When you do plug in the controller and the electronics, the controller will give you some time to press the stop. The stop button is right here on the control panel. So when I plug it in, so you can see that the machine tried to move and I pressed the stop quickly enough that it wouldn't move into that side. My origin and my limit switches are on this side. So I know that that carriage is moving in the wrong direction. I didn't see the y-axis move because the gantry under its own weight is hitting the limit switch. I'm gonna move the two axes manually. I know that the motion is in the wrong direction. So I'm gonna press the right button to move it left. and I'm gonna move the, the y-axis, I'm gonna move it down to move it up. Hopefully it moves up. And it's moving up. So we know that both axes are moving in the opposite direction. So how do you resolve that problem? You can solve the reverse axis problem two ways. One, using the motor connections, and the other way in software. Unfortunately, you can't do it through the control panel because it doesn't give you those options, but it does give you the options when you connect a computer to the laser controller. Let's do the example of changing the wiring to reverse the motions of each axis. The way to do that is to take the A plus and A minus, that pair, and move them to the B plus and B minus, and take the B plus and B minus, and move it to the A plus and A minus. So let's go ahead and do that. Right now it is A plus all the way to B minus. It's black, yellow, red, and blue. The actual motor is black, green, red, and blue, but I didn't have um, a cable that had a green wire instead of the yellow wire. So the yellow wire would be the green wire for the actual motor itself. So when I make the change, it's gonna be red, blue, black, and yellow. Because I'm taking the black and yellow and moving it here. I'm taking the red and blue and moving it here. Oh, let me power down first, that's important. Okay, and it's also good to wait for about 20 seconds before you make any changes to the connections. That is so all of the energy will dissipate from all the capacitors in the systems. Okay, so the coils have been switched on this one. I'm gonna go ahead and do it to the next one. You'll also notice that I have a wire here that I didn't have before, and that is just the shielding with this cable. This cable is a shielded cable because I'm running the limit switch wires in parallel with this cable. So I wanted to make sure to shield these, this cable, and it's, the shield is just going to the ground connection. And on the limit switch, I'm also shielding that and it's going to the ground on the digital pins, which I'll show later. I should have put this shield inside of a ferrule, but for this demonstration, it doesn't matter. But in practice, you definitely want to do that. Okay, so now let's turn, turn it on and see what happens. Remember to be close to the stop button when you plug it in. Okay, I caught it in time. Okay, so you can see that it did go to the right direction, the correct direction. The y-axis uh, didn't move because it's already on the, the limit switch. So if I press the right arrow, it should go right. And if I press the left arrow, it should go left. If I press the up arrow, 
Looks like the limit switch is... no? It'll move down, but it won't move up all the way. And that could be because of the position, the reason why, because it was hitting the limit switch when it started. So I'm gonna press reset and then stop it as fast as possible and see what happens. Okay, and it looks like the Y-axis wants to go up to an origin that may be up on the top. Let's see what the, the key presses do. Okay, it goes up down and then up and it doesn't go any further than that and that could could be because of an origin issue since i know the x is going in the correct direction for the key presses on the control panel and for going to the origin and i need more length in the y-axis so i can uh, demonstrate more control panel functions i'm going to reset it and hopefully the, the x-axis will hit the limit switch and home, but the y-axis will keep going up and I'm gonna press the stop before it gets all the way to the top. So I'm gonna press the reset button. Okay, so it looks like the x-axis was already on the x origin. Let me move it away. Actually, I'm gonna, I don't wanna go that far away. So I'm gonna go down. I'm going to do this again. I'm going to press reset. Something happened to the x-axis. Let me try that again. That definitely did not sound right. So what I'm going to do is uh, because I know there's something going on with the origin, but I think it has something to do with the speed. So let me demonstrate a, a little bit about the speed before we hook the computer up, because you need to get this under control before you connect to your computer so you can use the machine in some way to configure it. So let's test some speed issues. But what I want to do is I want to demonstrate what happens when you go too fast, which will cause a stall. And then I'll show you what types of movements you can make or what types of velocity changes you can make and what configurations they have in the control panel. The only way I can make um, this so it's readable on the on the screen is to bring the aperture way down. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to press the menu button, which is here, and you're going to have a bunch of options here. I'm not going to go through all of them, but but the ones that I'm going to use for demonstration. So let's go ahead and press the motion parameter setting. And this is for generally when you're running the machine. So this is when it's going from one place to another. This is a jerk, which is a millimeters per second per second per second. So this is you're trying to smooth out an acceleration end and beginning. So the, the cut jerk and space jerk are trying to smooth a beginning and end of an acceleration and deceleration. The acceleration, this is the minimum, and the cut acceleration, the space acceleration, which corresponds to the space speed that's moving from one to one place to another to get to something that is not being cut or being engraved. The engrave acceleration, the start speed, which is the initial speed that the uh, machine will run, and then the speed factor. We're not going to look at these parameters yet, so let's go back to the menu and go to common parameter settings. Press enter and work mode. If you want to disable going to the origin after you pressing the reset or turning it on, you can disable this, but I encourage enabling it so it's it goes back to an origin when you when you turn your machine on. I'll go back to these most likely in the, in other videos, but let's go to a couple parameters that you may be experiencing initially. So let's go to common parameters and this is the key move speed, which is moving the machine's axes using these key arrows. The run box, which um, just uh, it draws a box around the work that's going to be done. All right, so we, what we want to do is I'm, I want to demonstrate what happens when you have, a, have a, a condition where this is too fast. When you start up your controller's uh, default settings, this will be 100, not 10. So I'm going to change that to a 0 here and then a 1 here. So, and you'll see what happens when I change that to 100 and I press the arrow keys. So let's try that first. 
So I'm going to press the right arrow and you'll notice the carriage going in that direction but it's going to be a lot faster. It can still handle the the motion. So let's go ahead and increase that. So actually let's go to the the y-axis. It's going to stall because of the the amount of weight that it has. And you'll see that it, get, it won't go up because of the amount of weight. So it's definitely going way too fast for the amount of weight the y-axis has. So you'll notice that it's only going to move so, so far before it stalls. Let me demonstrate that on something that's not going against gravity. And I'll put this to, I'll put the key speed to 300 millimeters per second. Okay, so I'm going to press menu. Go back to common parameter settings. Go to common parameters. And then the key move speed, I'm going to change to 300. And I press enter and I'm going to press menu again to, oh no, escape to get out. All right, so now I'm going to move it and see how far it goes. Okay, so let's try it. Now you'll see that it only moves maybe two or three inches. So all that is, is it's, it's causing the motor to stall at a particular acceleration and velocity. So to overcome this, you want to decrease your velocity of the key moves specifically. And you also want to make sure that you have the right microstepping settings for your drivers. But I don't want to worry about the microstepping yet because this is going to affect calibration. When you have too high of a microstep setting, then the calibration may not work because the highest value you can use in calibration is a value of 99.999. So we'll address the calibration and the microstepping when we connect the computer to the system. I set the key move speed back to 10 millimeters per second, but since we, do, we didn't calibrate yet, we don't actually know what that is. What if it's actually 10 millimeters per second, because we haven't connected the computer to the system and we haven't done any calibration. Um, so all of the values that you see here initially, because the microstepping uh, isn't really set yet uh, and the calibration hasn't been done in the computer, all of the values for millimeters per second, millimeters per second per second, and millimeters per second per second per second, all will be off because that will only show a valid value once the calibration has been completed. So I've changed it back to 10 millimeters per second, which it really isn't 10 millimeters per second, uh, but it's slow enough to demonstrate. So the X, the Y, and of course the Y will only go up so much because of the issue we have with the origin, and that will be fixed with the computer.